Hello students, I am Dr. Arun Hampalta from Raipur, Chhattisgarh. Today we will be discussing a very useful topic which I think everyone should know about. I hope all of you will agree with me that eating boiled and steamed food without fat is very difficult. But how many of you know about the sources and composition of fats and oils that we use every day and in each meal? What nutrients we get from them? And lastly, what is the basic difference between a fat and an oil? So let us now discuss all the above points with the help of this module on types and nutritive value of fats in the subject food science. So this module will surely help you to know about the sources of fats and oils, to understand the composition of fats and oils, to distinguish the differences in composition of various fats and oils and to know about the nutritive value of various types of fats and oils. Dear students, the terms fats and oils collectively known as lipids are the substances which can be only characterized by a large array of properties. They are in general coming from plant and animal origin, insoluble or immiscible with water but soluble in organic solvents such as chloroform, ether, benzene and acetone and lastly they are formed of long chain hydrocarbon groups that is carbon and hydrogen but may also contain oxygen, phosphorus, nitrogen and sulfur. Now students we will try to understand the difference between fats and oils. I want to tell you that this dis distinction is purely an accidental one depending upon the environment in which the substance happens to be placed. If the substance is solid at ordinary room temperature, it is termed as fat and if it is fluid, it is termed as an oil. This is merely a distinction of convenience since all oils are solidified at lower temperatures and all fats are melted at higher temperatures. Obviously, the dividing line that holds for a cool climate would not hold for a hot one. In each climate, however, the distinction is of importance in industrial and in culinary uses. It has also some importance in nutrition since fats are somewhat less digestible than oils. Now students, we will try to understand the concept of visible fat and invisible fat. Fats and oils, as we all know, they are the glycerol esters of fatty acids which make up up to 99% of the lipids of the plant and animal origin. Lipids are the major components of adipose tissue and together with protein and carbohydrates, they constitute the major structural components of all living cells. Food lipids are either consumed in the form of visible fat, which have been separated from the original plant or animal sources such as vegetable oil and butter or as a constituent of basic food such as milk, cheese and meat which is referred to as invisible fat. Students on the screen you can see some pictures of visible as well as invisible fat. You can very well see that butter and different types of oils they are in the category of visible fat because we can definitely see these foods while we add them to in the preparation of foodstuffs. And the second category is of invisible fat in which we have kept milk, fish and certain dried nuts because fat is inbuilt in the structural uh, cells of these foodstuffs and we cannot from outside see that fat is present in it. Structural composition of fats and oils. 
The most abundant class of food lipids is the acyl glycerols, also known as glycerol esters of fatty acids, which dominate the composition of depot fats in animals and plants. One, two, or three fatty acids may be esterified with glycerol to form monoglyceride, diglyceride, and triglycerides, respectively. The most common form of food fats are triglycerides. Triglycerides are made up of three fatty acids, which are esterified to the glycerol molecule. And of course, this is the maximum maximum number of fatty acids that can be attached. Students, on the screen, you can see the formation of a monoglyceride. You can all see that glycerol is combining with one fatty acid and a simple fat monoglyceride is formed and water is removed. As you all are aware that in the above figure, R is the symbol for the fatty acid, half of any chain length. The fatty acid chain is generally of 16 to 18 carbon atoms. The most common fatty acids found in fats are palmitic, stearic, oleic and linoleic. In a simple triglyceride, the three fatty acids that combine with the glycerol are similar. While in a Bex triglycerides, more than one type of fatty acid is present. On the screen, there is a structural diagram of a simple triglyceride. You can see three molecules of fatty acids. They are attached to one molecule of glycerol and a triglyceride is formed. Students, in the next few minutes, I will explain you the saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids, they have single bonds between carbon atoms, while the unsaturated ones have one or more double bonds between the carbon atoms. In other words, in a saturated fatty acid, each carbon atom carries all the hydrogen atoms possible. In unsaturated fatty acids, the full complement of hydrogen atoms is not received. This leads to the formation of double bonds between the atom, for example, oleic, linoleic, linolenic and arachidonic acid with 1, 2, 3 and 4 double bonds respectively. Oleic acid is the example of monounsaturated fatty acid which is found in abundance in groundnut, olive oil, corn oil etc. Linoleic acid and linolenic acid are the examples of polyunsaturated fatty acids which are present in higher concentrations in sunflower, safflower, soya bean, sesame and flaxseed oils. The flavor and hardness of a fat depends on the type and amount of fatty acids present. Fats found in foods are a mixture of saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. On the screen, students, you can see the different types of fatty acids. And these fatty acids, they are shown here according to the number of double bonds. The first figure is of saturated fatty acid, which has got no bond. The second one is of monounsaturated fatty acid with one double bond and polyunsaturated fatty acid which should have more than one bond. Here two bonds are shown, on the uh, shown in the figure and examples of the first one that is saturated with no bond is butyric acid. The example of the monounsaturated fatty acid is oleic acid and the example of polyunsaturated fatty acid with more than one bond is linoleic acid with two bonds shown in the figure. Here there is a complete table showing some saturated fatty acids which are generally present in food. The first fatty acid, acetic acid, it has got two carbon atoms and the food source of acetic acid is vinegar. The second fatty acid is butyric acid with four carbon atoms. An example is butter. 
again caproic acid with six carbon atoms, food source is butter, caprylic acid with eight carbon atoms, examples are coconut and palm kernel, lauric acid with 12 carbon atoms, again palm kernel and coconut, myristic acid with 14 carbon atoms, coconut as well as butter, palmitic acid with 16 carbon atoms and the food sources are palm, soya, sesame, butter, lard and cottonseed oils and stearic acid with 18 carbon atoms it is found in beef tallow, cocoa butter and lard. This table is showing some unsaturated fatty acids which are generally present in food. The first unsaturated fatty acid is oleic acid with 18 carbon atoms and one double bond and food sources are ground nuts, sesame, olives, butter, cocoa butter, cashew nuts and avocado. The second unsaturated fatty acid is linoleic acid with 18 carbon atoms. Number of double bonds is 2. Examples are safflower, sunflower, cotton seed, corn, soya bean, groundnut, salmon and tuna. These are fishes. The next uh, unsaturated fatty acid is linolenic acid. Again it has got 18 carbon atoms. Number of double bonds is 3 and examples are soya bean, rapeseed, sesame and butter. The next fatty acid is arachidonic acid with 20 carbon atoms and 4 double bonds. An example of food sources are animal fats and groundnut. Next one is EPA with 20 carbon atoms and number of double bonds is 5. An example is fish oils. Urosic acid with 22 carbon atoms, one double bond. Examples are rapeseed oil and mustard oil. Here we are seeing the classification of fats and oils. Fats and oils can be classified in a number of ways. So first classification is based on the basis of degree of saturation. Fats can be of two types, the saturated fat and the unsaturated fat. A food fat is called saturated if it contains more saturated than unsaturated fatty acids. Examples are most of the animal fats with exception of marine oils. The second category of unsaturated fat, when polyunsaturated fatty acids are more in a fat than saturated fatty acids, the fat is termed as unsaturated. Unsaturated fats having one double bond are known as monounsaturated fat and having two or more double bonds are termed as polyunsaturated fat. Examples are most of the vegetable oils with exception of coconut, palm, palmolin, cocoa butter etc. On the screen we can see that fats and oils they are made up of glycerol and fatty acids. Again these fatty acids they can be either saturated or unsaturated. Unsaturated fatty acids can be of one double bond that is monounsaturated and two or more double bonds that is polyunsaturated. And examples are given of uh, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated and even saturated fatty acids. You can very well see that in saturated fatty acid molecules there are no double bonds. In monounsaturated, there is one single double bond and in polyunsaturated, you can find two double bonds. Here it is a comparison of two oils that is extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil. We can see that extra virgin olive oil, the red band is very small which is of saturated fats. The green band of monounsaturated fat is quite wide and again a small band of polyunsaturated fatty acids. But in coconut oil you can find that the entire band red band is there which shows that coconut contains a lot of saturated fatty acids and very small band of monounsaturated and extremely low band of yellow color which shows polyunsaturated fatty acid content. This is the second classification of fats and oils. 
on the basis of sources from where they are obtained. On this basis, again fats and oils, they can be divided into three categories. The first one is an animal fat, examples are butter, which is a milk fat, lard, which is a hog fat, tallow, which is a beef fat, suet, which is sheep and oxen fat, and all these fats, they are solid at room temperature. The second class is of marine oils like cod liver oil, shark liver oil, halibut oil, whale oil, and these are all liquid at room temperature and obtained, of course, from the sea. And third is the category of vegetable oils like groundnut, sunflower, sesame, soya bean, rice bran, mustard, safflower, cottonseed, olives, and they are all liquid at room temperature. While the other vegetable oils like coconut, palm, palm oil, cocoa butter, they are all generally solid at room temperature. Besides the above three types, there can be a class of manufactured fats also. Banaspati ghee and margarine can be kept in this group as they are manufactured by hydrogenation of vegetable oils using different techniques. In this slide, students, you can see there is an entire flow chart of Vanaspati ghee manufacturing process, which is of course a trans fat. First, the vegetable oil is taken, it is neutralized, it is bleached, and then hydrogenation is done by passing hydrogen gas in the presence of nickel catalyst. Then some post-treatments are done, deodorization is done, blending is done, and of course then it is packed in the form of uh, Vanaspati ghee. So this entire process of converting this vegetable oil into a sort of animal fat because it is solid at room temperature, we can get uh, Vanaspati ghee or the trans fat. Students on the screen, you can see figure depicting that lipids can be of three categories, animal fats, marine oils, and vegetable oils. Animal fats, which are solid at room temperature, and their examples are butter, lard, tallow, and suet. Marine oils, that is cod liver oil, shark oil, halibut oil, whale oil, and vegetable oils, mainly they are liquid at room temperature, like groundnut, sesame, sunflower, safflower, rice bran, mustard, cottonseed, and olive. Whereas some vegetable oils are in the form of fat because they are solid at room temperature like coconut oil, banaspati, palm oil, palm oil and cocoa butter. Dear students, shall we go to the next part of the topic? Now I shall brief you about the animal and the vegetable fats that are generally used in food preparation. Their use depends upon the properties of fats their availability and the food culture of the area of its use. First, we will discuss the animal fats. The animal fats and oils are derived both from terrestrial animals as well as marine animals. First of all, we will see about milk fats. Fats of this group are derived from the milk of ruminants, particularly cows and buffaloes. Examples of milk fat are butter, cream and ghee. Butter due to its pleasing flavor and good shortening qualities has for a long time been an important fat component in food preparations. To increase the shelf life of butter, it is heated to evaporate the water content and then it is termed as ghee. The second animal fat category is lard, tallow and suet. Lard is an animal fat from hogs, tallow from beef and suet from sheep and oxen. It is very popular in western countries as a low cost flavorful substitute for butter in frying and baking. It is obtained by the heat rendering of fatty tissues. Lack of uniformity in some of their physical properties such as flavor and granular structure and even susceptibility to the development of rancidity come in the ways of its use. Margarine. Margarine is an imitation of butter 
which originally created from beef tallow and skimmed milk, but now modern margarine is made from refined vegetable oil and water and may also contain some milk. Margarine like butter consists of a water in fat emulsion with tiny droplets of water dispersed uniformly throughout a fat phase which is in a stable crystalline form. Margarine has a minimum fat content of 80%, the same as butter. Margarine can be used as a spread as well as for baking and cooking. Now we will discuss the vegetable sources of fats and oils. Vegetable oils, they are found in abundance in fruits and seeds. More than 100 varieties of plants are known to have oil bearing seeds but only a few have been commercialized. At present, the seeds of some annual plants such as soya bean, cotton seed, sunflower, peanut, safflower, mustard and rapeseed are the largest source of vegetable oils. These oils contribute over 90% of the total supply of edible oils. A second source of vegetable oil is the oil bearing fruits and nuts of trees such as coconut, palm, palm kernel and olive. The oil from the palm and the olive is extracted from the fruit rather than the seed of the fruit. Now I will briefly describe some of the important vegetable oils. Groundnut. In our country, most of the groundnut produced goes into the extraction of oil and to a certain extent in the manufacture of confectionery. In India, about 50% of the total edible oil produced is from groundnut. Groundnut oil is a clear amber colored liquid extensively used in cooking and as a salad oil. It is the most important fats used for making margarine. It is also used in preserving fish as in the case of tinned sardines. The residue left after the extraction of oil is groundnut cake which is further used for the preparation of groundnut flour and cattle feed. Peanut butter and peanut milk are also made from groundnut. Soya bean. Soya bean oil is the world's leading vegetable oil in terms of both production and consumption. It is obtained from the raw bean by solvent extraction and is processed to a refined product that has a number of uses. It is used in manufacture of vanaspati, salad oil, mayonnaise, sandwich spreads, baby food, cake mixes and even for non-dairy creamers. Rapeseed mustard. There are a large number of species of mustard such as black mustard, rape etc cultivated in India and other countries of the world for oil extraction. The cultivated rapeseed mustard in the country is a mixture of three species Brassica campestris, Brassica ginsea and Brassica nigra. The oil extracted is yellow in color, viscous with a pungent flavor due to the presence of allyl isothiocyanate. This oil is used for cooking as well as for preservation purposes in pickle making. Niger is an oil seed which is grown in most parts of India but is, it is an oil seed of minor importance. The seeds contain about 40% of oil. Niger seed oil is a clean pale yellow oil which is edible and is used largely as substitute for sesame oil. Now we come to flax seeds. Flax seeds are very tiny little seeds slightly larger than sesame seeds and have a hard shell that is smooth, shiny and of dark brown color. Flax seed oil is rich in alpha linolenic acid. 
a type of omega-3 fatty acid which can be converted in the body to EPA which is the omega-3 fat found in fish oils. Thus, flax seeds are an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids, very good source of manganese and dietary fiber and a good source of magnesium, folate, copper, phosphorus and pyridoxin. Students, from this slide you can see the comparison of dietary fats and oils on the basis of the different types of fatty acids which they contain. We can very well see from this slide that coconut oil, it has got the highest saturated fat content of 87%. Similarly, you can see that olive oil, it has got the highest monounsaturated fat content that is of 74% and even you can see that slaf flower oil it has got the highest content of polyunsaturated fat that is of 75% and margarine it has got the highest other fat components of 23%. So from this slide you can definitely make out the different types of fats and oils they are made up of what is their composition how much saturated monounsaturated polyunsaturated fats they contain. Students now we will see the nutritive value of fats and oils. We all know that fats and oils are very important for human body because they are major components of adipose tissues and together with the protein and carbohydrates they constitute the principal structural components of all living cells. Fats are specially important in the development of cell membranes, the retina and even for the brain tissues. Nutrients present in fats. We all know that fat they supply 9 kilocalories per gram making it the most energy dense macronutrient. During certain periods of infancy, childhood and adolescence, the body needs additional calories to support growth spurts and development. Consuming healthy fats, the monounsaturated and polyunsaturated types can definitely supply these extra calories needed during this time. Besides being an important source of energy, Fats and oils both also offer beneficial nutrients to support optimum health like essential fatty acids and fat soluble vitamins. Students, in spite of all these well known merits of oils and fats, the consumption of dietary fat in India is very low. Much of our malnutrition, particularly amongst children, is due to low intake of fats. The FAO WHO expert group has recommended that 30 to 35 percent of our total calorie requirements must be met by oils and fats and the ratio of saturated to polyunsaturated fatty acids should be 1 is to 1. The minimum nutritional requirement of fats specified by the Indian Council of Medical Research is 20 kg per capita per annum. The average dietary consumption of oils and fats in India is about 20 to 25 percent of the said requirement. So there is an urgent need to increase the consumption of fats in India to meet the energy needs of our population. Vitamins we all know that fat soluble vitamins are not a part of a fat or oil molecule structure but yet dietary lipids they provide a vehicle to carry these nutrients into the digestive tract and cells. Vitamin A is found in fish oils, in liver and in dairy products and this vitamin promotes eye and skin health and supports immune system. Skin cells can synthesize vitamin D with the help of sunshine, 
and cholesterol and this vitamin helps our body metabolize calcium in support of bone health and nerve function. Vitamin E, a potent antioxidant that can protect the cells against environmental damage is available in seeds and nuts. The fourth fat soluble vitamin K is a key nutrient in blood clotting mechanism. Our body can manufacture the bulk of this vitamin in good health and it can also be found in vegetable oils, spinach, tomatoes and beans. Now we will talk about cholesterol. High intake of dietary cholesterol can lead to atherosclerosis and cardiovascular diseases. Yet our body requires a baseline level of this nutrient to maintain good health. Cholesterol along with essential fatty acids keeps the cell membranes in good repair. It also helps with the manufacture of vitamin D in our skin cells. Cholesterol is an integral component of many hormones and may play a role in cell to cell communication in the nervous system. Our body has the ability to synthesize all the cholesterol it needs even if our diet completely lacks the nutrient. Now we will talk about digestibility of fats and oils. It is important to know the digestibility part of fats and oils as unless and until fats are digested in the body they cannot provide us with any nutrient. Fats that are ordinarily consumed as constituents of common foods do not differ greatly in digestibility being utilized to the extent of 95 to 98 percent. Two enzymes help in digesting fats namely gastric lipase in the gastric juice and pancreatic lipase from the pancreas which acts in the small intestine. For fats to be digested they first need to be emulsified. Gastric lipase Exxon emulsified butter fat and then digestion begins in the small intestine. The presence of fats in the duodenum stimulates the secretion of bile from the gallbladder. Bile acts as an emulsifier and breaks down large fat globules into smaller particles. This increases the total surface area of fat and increases the efficiency of enzyme action. The alkaline nature of bile helps pancreatic lipase to remove fatty acids from the triglyceride, converting them to diglycerides and monoglycerides and finally to fatty acids and glycerol. The final products of fat digestion to be absorbed are fatty acids, glycerol, monoglycerides and diglycerides. Some remaining fat which is undigested may be excreted. So dear students, now I would like to conclude this module by saying that fats and oils are the glycerol esters of fatty acids which make up to 99% of the lipids of the plant and animal origin. If the substance is solid at ordinary temperatures, it is termed as fat and if it is fluid it is known as oil. Food lipids are either consumed in the form of visible fat such as vegetable oil and butter or as a constituent of basic food such as milk, cheese and meat which is generally referred to as invisible fat. On the basis of degree of saturation fats can again be of two types saturated fat and unsaturated fat. Again on the basis of sources students, fats and oils can be of three types, animal fats, marine oils and vegetable oils. There can be a class of manufactured fats also, vanaspati ghee and margarine, they, be, they can be kept in this group. 
fats are major components of adipose tissue and together with the protein and carbohydrates, they constitute the principal structural components of all living cells. Fats are especially important in the development of cell membranes, the retina and brain tissues. Fat supplies 9 kilocalories per gram, making it the most energy dense macronutrient. It is a source of essential fatty acids and fat soluble vitamins too. Thank you.